Amen. I want to go quickly to the word of God. John chapter 20 is where I'll be coming from tonight. John chapter 20 and I'm going to read verse 19 through verse 23. If you will stand with me for the reading of God's word and this will be the last time I ask you to stand tonight. John chapter 20 verse 19 through verse 23. When you have it, I want you to signify by saying, I have the bread. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said so, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, this is they are retained. And all of God's people said, Amen. Right before you sit down, I want you to announce it. Announce this to the person beside you. Tell them the wind is right. Wind. The wind is right. Um oftentimes uh my introduction can be long tonight uh it is thursday night i'm, I'm going to expedite and cut through the um, uh, through the pathway i will say um that the book of acts has a special place in the heart of all of us who are, are a part of this pentecostal persuasion and when i say pentecostal persuasion i'm not just talking about pentecostal culture because we have um, gained a lot through cross-pollination and through this melting pot of Christendom. We really have. Uh, we are exposed now to different streams we would never have been exposed to before. We are allowed now to fellowship a little bit more. Well, at, when we were growing up, I pastored in letters. Man, some of y'all were, were a little liberal. Uh, my church wasn't that liberal. We couldn't sing in community choirs. <laughs> And if there was a revival going on in another church across town and you asked permission to go, they would tell you, we ain't got enough church over here. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it was to protect us in many ways. They would remind us that you can't eat from everybody's table. Now, the, the, the difference is now you're not asking for permission <laughs> and you can go to other people's church without leaving your house now we are exposed sometimes overly exposed and to the point we're becoming sponges and sometime in the midst of this uh, camaraderie or cross-pollination we've picked up some things and taken on some things and we often have lost what I call Pentecostal identity now my message tonight is not trying to uh, build up some sort of Pentecostal superiority but I, w I do want to lift this up that because uh, we've been exposed to each other there are people who have learned Pentecostal culture and they haven't had a Pentecostal experience no seriously sometime have you ever been shocked and disappointed by folk that dance and they dance and cuss you know with when we were growing up, they would tell us, you know, before you sing in the choir, you got to have the Holy Ghost. And they would give us a little leeway, says, if you don't have it, you got to be actively seeking for the Holy Ghost. And so something has happened now. We have a generation that has learned the Holy Dance. But they don't have the Holy Ghost. They learn holy songs. Don't have the Holy Ghost. And then we end up having a whole bunch of meetings whole bunch of meetings and I think some of these meetings will be cut out if we put out the pillars again on the altar 
have some tarry services. All right, all right. I didn't went, I, I went left now, huh? No, really. So I, I know some of the things we did were cultural, but they were proven. That be, before, before you take on this title and position, I want to know, have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? And if you have been filled, when did he fill you? What happened to you when you feel? I, I know, I know you joined the church. Come on, I, I know you joined the church. I know you served in the choir. But have you ever had a God experience? Because you can't do a God thing without God. You can't do a holy thing without the Holy Ghost. Zerubbabel, but how will these things be? And the response is not by might, Hallelujah, not by power, but by my Spirit, said the Lord. By my spirit, said the Lord. The book of Acts. Most commentaries label this book as the, uh, the Acts of the Apostles. And I believe uh, God uh, uses the Apostles, but it should be the Acts of the Holy Ghost through the Apostles. And we run into the Acts experience of the history of the church. But there was a conversation before Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2. There was something that was established and laid in the premise of the gospel. It was the post-resurrection ministry of Jesus. Because sometimes when we preach the gospel, we put him in the tomb. And then on the third day he gets up and then he ascends. But there's a space between the tomb and the resurrection hallelujah is a revival in the lower parts of the earth where there had been a gap there a great gulf fix between the righteous dead and the unrighteous dead when he got up he didn't get up by himself hallelujah Abraham saw him coming hey, hallelujah glory the, the patriarch saw him coming that, that they had believed on and yet not able to cast their eyes upon. And now he's descended into the lower parts. Hallelujah. To lead captivity captive. Give gifts unto men. When he got up, hallelujah, the Bible said that people in Jerusalem looked up and they saw the saints who walk in the street. My Lord. But after this resurrection, he did not quickly ascend. The Bible says 40 days he walked around. I was a little tired, but I feel the strength of the Holy Ghost now. 40 days. I love the Bible. I love the word of God. Tell your neighbor, I love the word. I love the word. 40 days he walked around showing infallible proofs. Glory be to God. I need you to lay hands on your neighbor's shoulder. Tell him I am the proof of the resurrection. Yes, I could, I could take you to Jerusalem. Uh, you, we can fly into Ben Gurion Airport and come down on the west side of Jerusalem down to the Garden Tomb or take you to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre but depending on your archaeological fancy. I could take you to uh, St. Anne's Cathedral where they have excavated uh, the five porches believing this is the pool of Bethesda. I can take you to all of those archaeological findings. Even uh, one of the newest archaeological findings where they believe is Magdala. The town right near the Sea of Galilee on the coastal area. To prove to you these places existed and that Jesus' resurrection is real. But just in case, hallelujah. Those things are not enough to prove to you about the resurrection. There's some of you in this room, you've never been to Tel Aviv. You've never been to the Sea of Galilee. You've never been to Jerusalem. But still yet you believe. They asked the blind man, how do you know, hallelujah, that this Jesus is real? He says, all I know is I was blind. Mm. But now I see. I need you to grab somebody one more time. Ask him, did you hear what I said? Tell him, I don't know about all that other stuff. But tell him, I know he's real. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. 
That is why I love him so. He's so real. He's so real to me. Agnostics question him. Atheists deny him. But believers, hallelujah, we worship him. I want to know, do I got at least a hundred people in this room that you've gone through seasons of your life where the enemy tried to make you doubt the existence of God. The enemy tried to make you question, was this real? You started asking questions. Am I a believer just because I grew up in a Christian home? But I need you to tell your neighbor, tell them I'm in a different place now. Hallelujah. I don't care what another writer says. I don't care what a YouTube clip says. You can talk this out of me. You can't pull this out of me because it's in too deep. I got a personal experience with God. I am the infallible proof. Hallelujah. There's a fingerprint of God that's on my life. When I look back over my life and I consider the things I came out of, hallelujah, I did what other people did. Come on, don't y'all look at me like that. I did. I'm not better than my family members. I'm not better than my friends. The only way I came out was not because of my good record or my last name. I came out by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. Now the Bible says in Psalm 150, let everything that have breath praise him. But this is another invitation. Everybody can't do this. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, let me hear the sound of the redeemed. Everybody else be quiet, but I need those who've been snatched from the hand of the enemy. I need you to take the roof off of this building because I know where I would have been if God hadn't stepped in when he did. He could have ascended. Please be seated. He could have ascended, but he stayed around. He hung around making fish sandwiches. He hung around showing them infallible proofs. Glory be to God. But you have to realize, we romanticize the story of the cross because we are far away enough from it to do it. The early church when the war crosses, it was too triggering. You understand? You know, it was said in the world of comedy that it's going to take at least two decades before they could use 9-11 in a joke because we're too close to it it's too triggering so we can celebrate uh, the cross because we know how it pans out but you have to remember the disciples saw the soldiers apprehend him and from a from a distance they watched the claws on his back and the flesh being ripped off they watched the crown of thorns pressed upon his head. They saw him dragging that cross. Not only are they deal dealing with trauma, they're dealing with guilt. Because they could do nothing. And if they could, they didn't try. And so after this, the one they had put all their hope in, the one they had put all their life, they walked away from their occupations. They had walked away from their communities to follow Yeshua. And now he's dead. I know we know the scripture destroyed this temple, but in three days I'll raise it up. But it's possible to be so close to it that while you're hearing it, you're not hearing it. While you're seeing it, you're not perceiving it. So don't judge them because some of us are so familiar with our leaders that we don't hear the prophecy out of them. And, and this is why I tell people, I love my pastor. He's watching tonight. I don't need to be my pastor's best friend. I don't have to carry his bag, ride in his car, sleep in his house. Come on. I need my pastor to have a word for me when I get to church on Sunday some of the best armor bearers for the leader is not one who walks in with him and real armor bearers is someone who catches their leader in their spirit in the middle of the night and they should lay on their face and say Lord cover my pastor cover my first lady cover their house because it's possible to be so close to somebody's humanity that you miss out on their divinity he's fully God but he's also fully man and so in their humanity, they saw the crucifixion of his humanity and now they're hiding. 
I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I got the Holy Ghost, but I'm still human. I'm still human. I'm still human. And, and can I tell you something? God is not intimidated by it. God is not intimidated with Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. We all sometimes worship in the midst of a contradiction where we are so strong and yet so weak at the same time. We got a word for everybody else and lacking direction for ourselves. Don't y'all leave me out here by myself. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor that's a contradiction. That's a contradiction. And this is why David says, even my praise has to be a sober decision of my will. I don't always feel like blessing the Lord, but I will bless the Lord. And so they're hiding. They're sitting in a room and they are hiding. They're hiding. And all of a sudden, Jesus shows up without using the door. I know I'm not screaming, but if y'all would just let me preach the way I preach. He, he gets in the room without using the door. Because the truth is, some of us we're in a different place in the calendar, but not in a different place in our spirit. Although the calendar flipped, don't mean you've made it there yet. The disciples are dealing with something that we don't deal well with, and it's called grief. We know how to celebrate our wins, and we have plenty of people to know how to help us celebrate our wins. But the truth is, we don't have many people who knows how to help us process our losses. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I made it through it, but it cost me something. Yes, I made it through it. The funeral is over, but the grief is starting. You won the election, but you got to process the tough stuff that happened in the midst of it. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm still processing loss. Because even when you win, you lost something. If it wasn't nothing, but you lost the familiarization of the last place you were in. Mm. They were processing loss. And people want you to get past it quickly so they feel better. But you don't know what I saw. My God. And I know y'all want to talk about Thomas. And Thomas said, and Thomas says, I went, y'all call him Doubting Thomas. Thomas is me. The Bible says Thomas is, his name is Didymus, which means twin. Thomas got a twin. It's us. It's us. We are doubting Thomas. Yes, we're shouting, but we're still grieving. Yes, we're running, but we're still grieving. Scream at somebody, tell them, I do this, but it costs me something. It costs me to be the mother. It costs me to be the father. See, some people think you do it out of your pinky, but they don't know how much warfare you've had to go through in your mind to get out of the car and do it another day. Because you didn't have a chance to process it. You know why? Because everybody depends on you. So your response is, I'm good. I'm good. Why am I good? Because if I'm not, you can't do nothing about it anyway. Come on, come on. I'm good. I have learned why everybody else is having a breakdown. I can only have a mini breakdown because the people around me won't be able to handle it if I process it. the people in this room where you've had to talk your way through seasons I'm talking about you had to look at yourself in the mirror all right get yourself together because you know everybody gonna be looking at you come on get yourself they wait they're gonna be looking you up and down when you walk in the room to see how you're gonna respond yes I forgave them but it cost me some reconciliation cost somebody yes I forgave them and I'm still forgiving them because every once in a while, their perfume reminds me of their betrayal. Their praise the Lord reminds me of the backstab. And so yes, I am sitting in a closed room. 
and I don't feel like church. I am sitting, see, y'all want to rebuke me. See, look, you want to, every time I go through and I start processing, you want to rebuke me like I'm a demon. But the truth is, we all got to walk through a human experience. Yes, I'm called by God, but my calling comes with conflict. I need you to scream at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God is not going to let you quit, but he is going to let you catch your breath. Hallelujah. He ain't going to let you resign, but he going to let you catch your breath. So there are moments I'm like the disciples. I just shut myself in the room. As much as I love people, I have to refuel alone. And sometimes you got to put on the smile even for them. You got to be strong for them. And so they're sitting in the room with the door shut. And all of a sudden, Jesus shows up without using the door. I'm not, I can't scream this right here, but I feel the Holy Ghost so prophetic right now. I want you to lay hands on somebody's shoulder and I want you to give them eye contact and tell them in this season of your life you don't have to be strong God is walking through closed doors I said he's walking I'm talking about the moments where you didn't have enough faith for it. he says don't worry I'm walking through closed doors how come I need about 35 of you to praise God I need you to open up your mouth because there's a door emotionally you got shut there's a door psychologically you got shut God said I can handle it I'm not intimidated by it when you look up there is Jesus in the midst of your room my question is to you and this is a real question this is a real question how many times have you resigned in your head no no people don't know it this is why we celebrate anniversaries this is why we celebrate anniversaries because there was some day between the last anniversary and this anniversary that I said you know what this ain't worth it mentally it ain't worth it what's the main highway here what's the main highway here Schaefer, Schaefer. Schaefer? that's the main highway well let me ask you a question and where does Schaefer go where it go all the way where Give me a city. Oh, you don't live here. 75. Where does I 75 go? All the way to Florida. Okay, well, let me ask you Have you ever thought about packing your stuff up? Just only what you can get in the car. Y'all can have the furniture and get on 75 and drive. And just wherever I give out of gas, I stay there and start over. I want you to look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm proud of you. Tell him, because when you could have left, I'm glad you stayed. I want you to celebrate the stand power of the person you just finished talking to. And he proved to them, it's me. It's still me. I'm just in a glorified state. I come to prophesy to somebody. This is going to be your reintroduction season. Sometimes God got to pull you away from them to reintroduce you to them. This is going to be a reintroduction season. People think they know you, but God says, I'm getting ready to present you the person that I designed you to be before the setback. Hey, look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, they don't really know me. They don't really know me. As a matter of fact, y'all still got me in the frame of my childhood. Y'all still got me in the frame of my teeth. Y'all still got me in the frame of the child I had out of wedlock. That child is in college. I'm not there anymore. Come on, push somebody, tell them I'm not there anymore. You keep on bringing up old stuff. That is not, that's what I did, but that's not who I am. This is a reintroduction season. Jesus is in a glorified state. A body that can walk through walls, but a body that still has scars. 
And then he, and I'm closing now. Then the Bible says, he looked on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And he said, he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. He, and you know what happened when he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost? Nothing. They didn't fall out. They didn't speak in tongues. Y'all got to go back to the scripture. He said, receive the Holy Ghost. And nothing, nothing happened. Glory be to God. I come to preach to somebody tonight who all you got is a promise. And no activity. I want you to grab your neighbor by the hand and tell him all I got is a word. But a word is all I need. Glory be to God. See, the word is not just what he said, but the word is who he is. For John says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among them I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor hold on to your word sometime you'll get pulled in by promise and dropped off into a process but I want to tell you something about God that's different than your uncle God is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent he says if I said it if I spoke it I'll make good on it. Scream at somebody. Tell them, hold on to the promise. Hold on to the promise. The Bible says, write the vision and make it plain. So they that read it can run with it. Though the vision tarry, wait for it. Hallelujah. For it shall speak and not lie. Isaiah wanted me to remind you tonight that they did wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint i want you to push them out and tell them you better not quit wait on the promise come on tell somebody it may be hard right now but wait on the promise for he that will come shall come and will not tarry somebody scream wait on him wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart I know you got trust issues because people in days past have made promises to you and they disappointed you I know you got trust issues because somebody took your heart and they broke your heart and they mailed it back to you but I want to lift to you there's some trust in horses some trust in chariots but we we the people of God we put our trust in the name of the Lord for the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run in and they are safe pull on somebody say somebody wait on him wait on him no matter how hard it gets wait on him when people act shady wait on him get out of your head and get in the spirit and wait on the Lord all they had was a promise all they had was a word but the word will keep you when a song can't fix it the word will keep you when dancing can't fix it the word will keep you that's why David said that word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path somebody lift up your hands and say thank you for the word thank you God for the word 
heaven and earth will pass away. But the work, but the work, I thank God for the word. I said, I thank God for the word. And that's why when I look at Mary, I see Mary had a word that was growing in her belly to the point when, when, when she went to the house of Elizabeth, she looked at Elizabeth, a woman that only had a word but no activity. Everybody said a word but no activity. But when, when Mary looked at Elizabeth and said, hey, Liz, the word in Mary caused the baby in Elizabeth to start leaping. Lay hands on somebody and say, somebody greet me until my baby leaps. Talk to me. I don't need no fear. I don't need no doubt. Speak faith to my favor. Strength to my strength. Lay hands on somebody and give them a jump start and shall live. I commend the ministry in you. I commend the gift in you. I commend the promise in you. Reach over to somebody as a shout. Live. Tonight is an activation. I feel a prophetic activation. I feel a prophetic activation. I want you to get out of your seat. Mary, find you and Elizabeth. And lay hands on them. And said, I command you to leave. Tell them it's still alive. You ain't felt nothing lately. But it's still alive. The vision God gave you is still alive. Tell somebody, wait on it. It's still coming. Wait on it. It's coming to pass. Wait on. Oh. And Jesus told them. Don't stay here. I know you like Galilee, but you can't stay here. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor he won't let me stay comfortable. Oh my God, I didn't choose this for me. He wouldn't let me stay comfortable. I wish I could be anointed and anonymous, but my anointing keeps announcing me. Look at your neighbor. Say your anointing keeps announcing you. You can't even sing right. You can't even hide right. You try to sit in the back. You don't volunteer. But God chose this. You're trying to figure out how do I always end up on a committee? How do I always end up on the praise team? How do I always end up with a microphone in my Hand. Slap your neighbor, tell him, God did this to me. I didn't choose it for myself, for those he foreknew. He also predestined God. He did this to me. He said to Jeremiah, Before I form you in your mother's womb, I ordain you to be a prophet to the nations. Somebody make a step and walk. Because I'm walking out the doneness of God. It's already done. I'm just walking it out. It's already finished. I'm just walking it out. There's a leap in my spirit. I, I thought about quitting. But I believe I run up. See, see what the end, see what the end will be.
Absalom. Power in Judea. Power in Samaria. Power into the uttermost parts of the world. Power to tread on serpents. Power to speak in tongues. Power to cast out demons. Somebody shout power. us to do? Go to Jerusalem and do what? Tear it. Go there and wait. For the 40th day he's leaving. He's like, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. Don't go, don't do this to me. We just got your back. We're just creating normality. And this is why it's hard for some of us to embrace new people. To embrace a new season because it's it's triggering. What is it going to be like? Even new people come and they're like, "Hey, I love you," and you're like, "Yeah, I love you too." How long you gonna stay? I love my pastor. Who sent you? We're triggered because what you're saying sounds like the last person who's. Who betrayed me? So they saying, "Don't, uh, uh-uh, don't leave, don't leave." He said, "No, I will not leave you comfortless. I won't leave you without a father." He says, "I will come to you." Though, so that was confusing. You're gonna send a comforter, and you're gonna come. Just go to Jerusalem. There's some things you won't get here. Because the carnal mind cannot comprehend the things of the spirit. But they are spiritually discerned. And the Bible said. They got in there. With the women. Now this is the challenge. Hallelujah. He appeared to over 500. But when we got to Jerusalem. There was only 120. Will you look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you're going to be glad you made the trip. (laughs) 120. 120 men and women. So we can't have a Pentecostal experience without the women. (sighs) We can't. And we, we honor Mary, but she's not our intercessor. She's not our mediator. We only got one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. No, no. no. Why do I not look at her as an intercessor? Because even Mary had to go to the upper room. She says, I experienced it once. Hallelujah. Now I want a permanent dwelling. And they sit in there waiting. Actively waiting. Actively. That's why, even though we make fun of the old church sometime, and they told us to call on Jesus. Well, they understood that this kind of waiting was like the waiting that a waiter would do in a restaurant. And he said, well, I'm just going to wait. Well, if a waiter in a restaurant sits down in the booth beside me and said, they're going to wait, I'm going to have a problem with that. You serve while you're waiting. They were serving the heart of God. Waiting for the promise. Never having it before, but waiting on the promise. And with the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all in one place with one accord. And suddenly, oh, there came a sound from heaven. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place.
place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven and the sound was not the sound of a Hammond organ it was not the sound of a tambourine but when the Holy Ghost came How did they know this is what he spoke of? Because what happened at that moment reminded them of what he breathed on them and said receive the Holy Ghost and nothing happened. I come to tell about 50 of you that will praise him. In the next 30 days, God is going to make it clear what the last season was about. It wasn't just an idea. God says, I'm going to make sense out of it. You're about to find out why it happened the way it happened. I need somebody that's in the in-between of understanding to open up your mouth and shout for the part that you don't understand. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Out of all the things that I've experienced in life, nothing compares to accepting Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. If you are not saved and you have not experienced the saving power of Jesus Christ right where you are, ask him. Ask him to save you and he'll meet you at the point of your need. If you need to connect with someone or someone to pray with you, send your prayer request or call the number on the screen and we will be there to share Jesus Christ and the message of hope with you. I wanna thank all of you who have been supporting our ministry down through the years. It's because of you that we've expanded this YouTube channel. We've expanded all on the outlets that you're hearing of this message. So what I want you to do is make sure you share, make sure you subscribe and send this message to someone who needs to hear it. And for all of you who desire to support our ministry, there are ways to give on the screen. And remember when you sow into our ministry, you're not just helping us do ministry domestically, but you're partnering with what we're doing all over the world. The seed may leave your hand, but it will never leave your life. This is Bishop S.Y. Younger saying go with God because he's already going with you. God bless.